Hello, everybody. Um, I would like to welcome you to Northwood University's Educational Success Program informational webinar. My name is Dr. Karen McGregor, and I am the Associate Academic Dean for Student Success at Northwood University. And part of my role is that I, am, I oversee the Educational Success Program at Northwood University. And so today in this presentation, we're going to give you an overview of the program. We're going to share with you uh, kind of the why ESP, and we're going to walk you through some important elements of it. You're going to have an opportunity to meet um, some of our uh, the people who facilitate the program, and um, hopefully a couple of the students who have participated in the program and a former mentor who is, is part of the program as well. So you're going to get a good feel for what this program is about, and you're going to really have an opportunity to determine whether or not this is the type of thing that uh, you're going to be able to to be able to envision yourself successfully fulfilling this program and and eventually successfully fulfilling your degree at Northwood is the goal for this presentation. So um, first slide, um, we're going to give you a program overview. And so what the section of the presentation we're going to really look at why ESP and what's the purpose of it. So um, next slide. Let's get into the business. So one of the reasons why the educational success program exists is that there is a difference between college and high school. And I feel like that's been stressed a lot that, you know, college is different than high school because the professors don't take attendance and you don't really have to go to class or it's going to be a lot more exciting or I'm going to have a lot more freedom. And so a lot of people have an idea in their head of why, how or how college and high school are different from one another. The reason we have the educational success program is we've noticed that some students I mean, many students struggle in the transition from high school to, to college. And the reasons why our college classroom instruction is different. In the high school setting, a lot of the um, information is given to you inside the classroom. And so 99% of the learning happens while you're in the chair in the classroom and the faculty and your, cla your, your teachers are telling you what you're supposed to be learning. Um, the structure and the schedule is different in the university setting. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The faculty, it's a little bit flipped in the university setting. So there's going to be some time that you're going to need to be learning on your own, and there's going to be some time that you're going to need to be in the classroom. And so without both of those elements, students miss out. And yet there's this big myth going on that, like, you don't need to attend class. And so um, one of the reasons why we have this program is to help students make that transition to say, okay, yes, I do need to go to class, and yes, I do need to work outside the classroom. The, schedule, the structure and schedule is different in the college setting. Um, the biggest difference is there's no bells ringing, and there's no one really telling you what to do at what time. And so the structure that you adhere to in the college setting is the one that you kind of put around yourself, but it's a self-inflicted structure that the freedom is all there for you to do whatever you want. Um, but whereas in high school, the bell rings and you go to class and then another bell rings and you go to lunch and then another bell rings and you go to practice and then you go home and then potentially someone will be telling you, hey, did you start your homework? And all of that kind of goes away in the college setting. How your faculty or teachers reach out to you and assist you is different. In, in K-12, they're really looking at, so in high school, they're really looking at the professors are going to be a little bit more informing to your parents or sharing in a portal how you're doing every single day. And so it changes that relationship because the faculty really are are kind of take a back seat to that. And some of them might re reach out to you, but the majority of them are going to be waiting for you to take on some help seeking behaviors. And so we focus on that in the program. The, the biggest difference is that the workload is different. Most students report needing to do about an hour's worth of homework in high school. And we recommend two to three hours per credit hour outside of the classroom doing work per week. And so that's just a different, it's a different ratio of work for each per person um, from high school to the university. And then we have that there's a freedom and distractions that are prevalent. And so in this new environment, there's less structure, there's more freedom, there's more work, but you might not know it if you've missed class. And so it really creates this magnifying effect where 
if we have lesser serving traits like procrastination or um, or a lack of help seeking, when you start to struggle, you just let yourself struggle. Those types of things are magnified in the college setting. And I can just give a quick example. If the workload is different and in high school, you had one hour of homework per week or per night and you put it off till Sunday night, that's five hours. Can you put that off? Yeah, you can probably make that up on a Sunday night. But if you're in the college setting and you have 15, 20 hours, you can't do that all in one evening. And so it's that chunking your work and moving forward. So um, but your lesser, your the college setting magnifies your lesser serving traits and habits. So the ESP program is there to pick up for and kind of build in some of these skills. And um, so next slide will kind of show you how that happens. So this is kind of um, a sneak preview and really our secret sauce to why our bridging program is good and there is a goodness to our bridging program, it's won some awards. And the reason why is because we have a very specific formula that we follow. Um, and we're trying to facilitate a personal transformation that will help you achieve your academic and personal goals. And so first thing that we have is an ask. And this I call this an ask because we're gonna ask you today, starting today, and then when you come to the program, what is something that you do that doesn't serve you well? And so, sorry, my, my mic is shaking. Um, what is a habit that you have that you don't think is serving you well? And like that, what we're gonna say is, okay, we need to get rid of that and we need to then build in some skills to replace that. So we're gonna help you develop some new habits that are gonna help you be successful. And then we're gonna support you along the way. And so when you put these two, these three things together, a lot of people know procrastination is bad. I shouldn't do it. But they don't know the steps to fix that problem in themselves. They don't have the tools to solve it for themselves. Everybody knows they need to ask for help when it comes to they're struggling academically or they don't understand how to do something. But not everybody knows how to get that help in the college setting. And so what we've done is we've created this program to give students a head start, help them build a social group on campus, and really, more than anything, get them into the mindset of what it's going to take for them to be successful. So what's going to take for you to be successful before everybody else gets to campus. Because the first two weeks of the semester are kind of really fun. There's a lot going on. And there's new clubs to join. There's new people to meet. But if you spend your first two weeks not doing any of your coursework and getting swept up in the fun of uh, coming to a new institution, you're going to be two weeks behind when it comes to your knowledge and you're starting to take quizzes and stuff like that. You'll fall behind very quickly. And so what this program does is it helps you helps jump start your program here at Northwood so that on day one you're ready to roll and you don't have to spend so much of that time kind of getting acclimated. Next slide. So ESP very closely models the day of the life of a college student. And so I'm just going to walk you through our a, day, a quick schedule of the day. So that's this. It's not, oh yeah, okay, now it's showing up. So it starts in the morning because a lot of students have morning classes. And so we're getting you ready for that so that you don't have to miss your, snooze your alarm a few times the first day of classes because you're going to be in the habit of waking up early because we're giving you enough time to start changing your circadian rhythm and your biological clock so that you'll be ready to get up for your first class. So you have a wake up, there's a first class block, there's a second class block, there's lunch, there's a third course block, there's a study block, there's mentor led activities, there's dinner, there's a study period, and there's an evening social activity, something fun to do, stress reliever in the evening. And so this is a full day but this is what your college life is like. Every day is a full day. You've got classes, you've got activities, and you've got study time. And so we want you to get your, get that into your habit and to get that structure down so that you can continue to move forward once you get to campus for real when the classes start. So the next slide will take you to the elements. And so inside of that little mini schedule that I just gave you are some class blocks. And so now I'm gonna bring on some um, co-presenters and they are going to share with you what they the, the classes that they present that they're the faculty of during ESP and share with you what the, the elements of their program are so first up is JT Justin Thomason go for it 
Um, yeah, so hello, uh, my name is JT. Um, I, my name is Justin, but uh, there's someone else named Justin in my, um, in my department. So I go by JT, um, nice to meet you all. Uh, one of the things that I am in charge of for the, during the ESP program, I'll be meeting with you pretty much daily um, to go over some things that you see on this slide, growth mindset, keystone habits. Um, but one thing that I wanna do is um, give you like a quick story because I think stories are much easier um, to remember than all of this information that you're getting. And so if you've ever thought of like Hollywood or a movie, um, every movie um, has some key elements to it. So the part of the story is basically there's this character, the hero, the hero is you. You want something. In this case, I'm just going to assume that it's a degree. Um, and then during the pursuit of that degree, you encounter a problem. Um, and so it isn't until the hero in the movie finds a mentor. Let's think of Star Wars or something like that, for example, like Luke Skywalker finds Master Yoda. Um, on Northwoods campus, we have all kinds of people in here that are acting as your Yoda. You are the hero to this story. Um, you are the one that uh, has something that you want to happen, which is a degree. And all of us are here to help you. We'll be able to point you into uh, the right direction, get the right information. We're gonna have a call to action, um, which will say, hey, let's use what you're learning in this program. Let's use what you're learning in some of the skill building activities that we do um, to reach success, to reach this outcome. Um, and that's pretty much the basic premise of every, any Hollywood movie. Um, and so when it comes to growth mindset, uh, where it will do activities um, that will um, kind of get you mentally prepared. Like I can do this um, myself, Karen, Dr. Karen McGregor, Tamara, Aaron, we have all read, you know, multiple books, The Power of Habit, Grit, um, A Mind for Numbers, Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Eric Barker. Um, we've done a lot of um, reading to prepare great workshops, great themes to teach you skills. Um, and it's not a one size fits all thing. This isn't a program that you're going to go into and it's like step one, do this, step to do that. It's going to vary based on your individual needs, uh, based on whatever skills. And um, Karen covered it a little bit in the ask. Some of us, some heroes have, um, some heroes have different powers. Uh, somebody might have ice, somebody might have fire, somebody might have earth. I think that's uh, Captain Planet. I might be aging myself. But um, anyway, that's basically uh, what it is that this program is going to do for you is to figure out what your strengths are, figure out what your weaknesses are. We're going to allow you to identify those things. And then we are going to work on those things with you. We're going to try to set up some habits. Uh, we're going to um, kind of debunk some myths that you may have, like you're just not good enough for something. When really the reality is maybe you just haven't figured out how to learn uh, what it is that you're trying to learn yet. And we all go through those things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're here to we're here to help. Please let us know if you do have any questions. All right, thank you, Justin. That was wonderful. Um, I love your stories. Uh, so the next person up is uh, Tamara Heyjay, and she is here to share with you about this, how we help you build your success skills. Hi, yep, my name is Tamara Hey Jay. A lot of uh, the students just call me T or Coach T because uh, my name is quite a mouthful. Um, in addition to the great ESP program that I'm involved in, I'm also the director of the Timberwolf Learning Center. And this is an area at the university where students come to get free tutoring. Uh, so that's uh, a great thing to have in my back pocket as I get to know your students because I can help them immediately in that area if and when they need that help. Um, during the ESP summer session, my class uh, that I put on for them covers a lot of things. Um, time and task management is huge and the only subject that we cover more than once. But we'll also talk about things like why is college important, uh, critical thinking skills, different types of learning styles, 
um, how to better read. So reading to answer questions, not just reading to read. Um, how to prep for your finals and a whole much more. And the great thing about my class is that it overflows into the fall semester. So I get to support your student throughout their journey of their first semester in college because we will meet weekly and have very timely uh, discussions depending on where we are in the semester. For example, uh, our first class will be all about uh, syllabus. Uh, some students know what this is and some don't depending on the high school they went to. But basically what we will do is we'll make sure they have looked at all of them and read them and make sure that they have a good understanding that this is a contract between themselves and the teacher and the, all the ton of information that the syllabus will give them, which will help them do a better job in their uh, time management portion. And as we progress through the semester, our topics will change. Uh, for example, we'll talk about how to give a presentation there's a certain time of the semester where they're going to start to be asked to give presentations, how to, you know, recommit. Everyone tends to kind of wane a little bit by week 10, for example, um, always to how, you know, how do you prepare that final project or paper, uh, making sure, again, that they are aware of the TLC, that's the Tim Wolf Learning Center and all the resources that it has. Um, so basically, that's my job in a nutshell. And hopefully by building this relationship with your student, even after the fall semester, I tend to mentor a lot of students. So I may see your student throughout their whole freshman year, but your student will know by the end of our ESP summer session that I'm a, a resource for them to help them throughout their entire college career. Um, I won't be able to uh, remind them to do their homework on a daily basis, but um, that's part of my job too, to kind of check in on them to make sure that they're getting what they need, they're feeling like they're staying on track, um, that they're not just treading water or feeling like they're overwhelmed or drowning, that they're actually swimming towards their objective um, constantly. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I do. Okay, so um, one of the things that Tamara hinted on is the ESP is a residential program during the summer session, but that we also include ongoing support throughout the first semester and into the second semester at Northwood. And so we don't really expect that a student, any of you can just say, okay, like we're, you're not, we're never done yet, I think is probably, I mean, everybody that's working on continuous improvement and self-improvement knows that we're never done yet. So part of this program that makes, that makes it special is that we don't just say, okay, now it's your turn. We continue to facilitate that support throughout the first semester. And that includes uh, a session that focuses just on success skills with, with Coach T or Tamara. And then the second one is a individual, uh, not individual, but like a session that you do where you spend time focusing on your math class with Erin um, Simmons. So she's up next to talk about the math skills uh, session during ESP. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Erin Simmons. Um, I'm in charge of the math portion of the ESP program. I'm also an assistant professor of math here at Northwood. Um, this is gonna be my fifth year in the program. I absolutely love being part of it and getting to work with people through the program. So the main part of the math portion of this program is we focus on just really building the math skills that you're going to need to be successful when you move into your, your full math classes here at Northwood. So we work on just really building those skills. And then at the end of the program, you have the chance to take the math placement test so that everything that we've learned along the way, everything that we've worked on are things that are going to be helpful for you when you're taking the math placement test at the end. And then that math placement test gives you the opportunity to possibly move up to a different math class um, than, what, than the one that your SAT or ACT placed you into. So we work on that during the, the time that we're together in the summer. And then you also have a session with me, like Tamara was mentioning, you have a session with me in the fall as well. So when you get into your fall math class, um, regardless of who you have as a teacher, you'll also have an extra math lab with me where we're able to really focus on just continuing the study skills that we learned in the summer. It gives you the opportunity to work on your math homework in a structured way where I'm there with you so that if you have questions, you can ask me and work on them with me. And also you'll be with all of your other classmates that you've met in the ESP program. So they'll be working on the same stuff with you. So it gives you that opportunity to continue to learn in a group together. 
So our goal in this program really is we know that oftentimes math is a challenge for people, but we want you guys to be able to work with us to build the skills that you need so that you know that you have the ability to be successful when you get into your math class in the fall. So we're going to provide you with a lot of different resources, both um, for your math classes and just study skills in general, so that when you get into the fall semester, you're ready to go. You know all the resources that are available to you, and you're ready to just kind of hit the ground running on that first day of classes. So math is a big key to student success, and it's not just because you have to learn to do the math to be successful. I mean, yes, obviously math is money, but part of it is that, and we believe with the program as we've developed it, is that the skills that you use to develop to stick with your math and that growth mindset set that comes with doing your math really pays off throughout your academic career. And so if you think about it, and I've done this in a live presentation in a classroom full of students, and I'm, I say, Raise your hand if you don't love math. You know, it's the first time they're meeting and they tentatively, they're like, oh, I don't want to admit this, but they do. They raise their hands. And I say, how many of you would rather do anything else other than do math? And they, you know, they raise their hands again. And I'm like, how many of you rather clean your bathroom than do math? And it's like, it's funny because that, you know, they raise their hands, except for one guy who probably has a really gross bathroom. Let's face it, math. <laughs> If you're not choosing to do math, you're rather clean your bathroom. Think about it when you have other options of, okay, they're going to be doing a cornhole tournament or, oh, they're going to be having something else going on on campus or the auto show's coming up and you still have to, you have to have this attraction to doing math. And so this program helps you build that attraction to doing math by giving you some quick wins and extra support from Professor Simmons and kind of walking you through the steps that it takes to be successful in, in your math classes. And so um, I'm hoping that you know at the end of the semester, maybe when the students come on, they can maybe talk about how their math mindset towards math changed a little bit. So um, next up we have the student voice, and so that's perfect segue. So um, maybe we're making this up, <laughs> but no, I don't think we are. Um, so I have a word from some students that um, have gone through the program and they can share with you how it affected them. So I'm gonna bring on Giovanni, but he was having a technical issue earlier. Oh, it's working now, yay. Okay, yeah. Giovanni is a former mentor and Angelina is a former student and they're gonna share with you their experience with the program. So take it away. Angelina, feel free to tell us about the experience. Okay, uh, my name is Angelina Brindley. I am a freshman currently at Northwood University studying automotive aftermarket management. Uh, I am a first generation college student and a uh, success story. I would like to call myself a success story in the ESP program. Um, I started off in high school, uh, hating school, uh, especially math was my most difficult subject. And I decided to go and be a part of the ESP program, which has taught me uh, uh, so much. And I became a totally different person. Um, being in the ESP program, I not only uh, learned or made new friends, but I also learned better, uh, you know, test taking skills and note taking skills and to, uh, you know, become a better student once the semester started. Having Professor Simmons there to help me with my math homework, especially uh, during the ESP program, uh, really helped me out a lot. And everything. Uh, from that program, I took into uh, beginning, you know, my first semester at Northwood, and I right away I was, I'm I'm one that used to procrastinate, and that was something that I had to figure out not to do anymore. I know it's easier said than done, like everybody has said, but I just put it in my head of you need to just get in and just dive in and get to work in order to become what you want to become and get the degree that you want here at Northwood. You just had to put the time in and you really got to focus on becoming a successful student here at Northwood. Uh, Giovanni, I'll let it, I'll let you take over. Greatly said. Well, hello everyone. My name is Giovanni Ellington Jr. And I was a ESP student in 2017 and a two year mentor, hopefully three this coming 
summer where you guys will get to meet me in person and probably dislike me as a whole person, but you know, that's a different story. I am a hospitality major and I am a, a county major as well. I'm, I do a lot of things on campus, but more importantly, I ESP has been such a groundbreaking, life-changing experience for me. And I, I support this, I support this program 110%. When I first started ESP, I, I live in Ohio, so I'm about four hours away. And that was the biggest, that was the hardest thing for, for me is being away from my family. And it really showed me that, you know, I could be a successful student. I can be a great student and I can live on my own and I can take care of myself. Not only that, I can make my family proud being so far away from them. And I, I, I did it like the graduation was like one of the happiest days of my life. And I just love this program. I'll always support and like do whatever I can to support you all. Thank you, Devani. So um, I'm really glad that you guys were both able to give your perspectives. Devani has been a mentor for two years. So why do you choose, this isn't your interview, but why do you choose to come back and mentor year after year? Mentoring is, is honestly such a great experience. I was actually Angelina's um, mentor as well. So it allows me to, you know, I'm, I basically get to show students why I love this program so much because it, it took a person that really didn't do well in school to me excelling. Like Professor Simmons is the reason why I even am decent at math and it, it has changed my life so much. I feel like it is such a positive experience and I just love to be a part of it. I love watching all of the ESP students grow in their own individual ways. And I love like just keeping up with them and seeing their growth because I don't know, it's, it makes me feel like a, a dad, you know, I feel yeah. great. <laughs> so I think Professor Simmons would agree that Giovanni is the reason Giovanni is good at math. Um, but I think just to say, but I think that that kind of speaks to the year after year family affair that it becomes, and it really becomes a place where students can feel trust and connection with one another. And I think Giovanni is gifted at facilitating that. So um, are there, I think that this is the uh, next question. So we're gonna say goodbye to our students, but we'll bring them back for the question and answers. So you're seeing this, you've you saw these students who's, to have said some things. Maybe you saw yourself in them. Maybe you heard a story from JT and you're like, yeah, I feel like I'm the hero of my own story, but I need a Yoda. Maybe you heard something that Coach T said where it's like, wow, there's gonna be someone there to support me every single time, every week after week until I'm ready to do this on my own. Maybe you heard me say something that you resonated with or Professor Simmons and now you're feeling like I'm in, so now what do I do? So. Um, the first thing you got to do is you got to reflect about what habits you want to get rid of and which ones you want to increase to be successful. The more sort of personal growth pre-work you do where it's like where you say, OK, I need to do this thing. You can start putting some things in place before you get there to kind of start becoming the person that you want to be. And I say Angelina said that she's a completely different person. She's not a different person. She was an amazing person before ESP and she's an amazing person after ESP, but she's able to walk onto her goals now and accomplish them, which maybe makes her feel different, like in her headspace, but she's still an amazing person. It's not gonna, we well, don't, there's no like a magic wand where we're gonna turn you into somebody else. We're gonna turn you into you, but better. So I just wanna put that out there is we don't, this is not magic. So when you're ready to commit to the program, so I have a picture of a, uh, ring commitment, but there's some things you need to do to commit to Northwood. There's some admission steps that you need to do. So if you haven't already committed to Northwood, you'll need to do that because you need to be an admitted committed student to um, take part in the program. And then you need to fill out the ESP intake form, which will be located in your admissions checklist once you're fully um, committed and admitted. And then the final thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to secure funding and do this money matter situation. And you're probably thinking, well, why do they have to do that first? And wh why are we talking about that now? And one of the things is, is that this time frame, like things are going to start to go fast. And I know that they probably might already feel like they're going fast in your senior year because 
your classes ended before they were supposed to. And so, you know, you might feel like you're on a pushed up time frame and you and it, and, and it could be. But one of the things that kind of moves fast is that the bills go out first for, for your first year, they go out June 1st. And so one of our recommendations for students is that they secure their funding and kind of understand their loan situation if they're doing student loans or private donor loans or parent plus loans and have these loans in place three weeks prior to bills going out. Now, I'm sort of new to the world of um, like I have a daughter, but she's five, so I haven't paid for college in a long time. And um, it seemed a little counterintuitive to me when we were talking with financial aid about this, that you would secure your loans three weeks prior to the bills going out. Because typically when I think of it, it's like if I want to buy a car, then I get the loan at the same time that I'm trying to get the car. And so it's kind of a counterintuitive thing. Why would I get my loan before the bill is out? But I think that there's just a little bit more to it. And it's a little bit more complicated in the higher ed landscape. And so paying for college is a new journey. And I encourage you to check back that email that we sent you with the welcome packet. There's financial aid information and there's a financial aid contact info number. Lean on our experts. Like that is what they're there for. They are there to help you get funding. And so we want to make sure that you get this all cleared up so that you can participate in the program. Um, and so we just really want to make sure that you've taken the time to do that in advance. It's if you get last minute, then you're not sure. I know it just ends up being a situation. So um, those are your three steps. Commit, commit, commit. That's what you got to do. And then continue to commit to yourself and show up for yourself throughout the program. So now it is time for questions. Um, I'm in the panel back. Um, I feel like we're on the Brady Bunch, uh, but I'm bleeding myself, I guess. So if there's a question from the panel, you can type it into the area. And I don't know if you've already gotten some, because I haven't been monitoring that. But if not, um, it doesn't appear that we do. Well, that means we're doing a great job. <laughs> Is there anything else any of our panelists would like to add that they didn't feel they had time to or something that occurred to them while um, one of the others of us were speaking? One thing I'll add is I think one of the great things about the program is all of the people that you meet through it and the support system that you gain. So when you're in the program, um, Dr. McGregor sets up time for you to meet people from the library, um, from the tutoring lab, um, all different people around campus that are here to help you when you start your journey at Northwood. So I think that's one of the really important things about the program is all the resources and the people that you meet before you even get here in the fall semester. That's true. You'll meet everyone from the president to our vice president to some of your faculty members. And we make sure that you have opportunities to interact with some people that you'd be seeking help with and coaches and everybody that you would be interacting with. Because we want, we want you to get that out of the way so that when you get here on day one, you can get going and really feel like you can achieve whatever you need to achieve. Um, anybody else have something important? Oh, yeah. Mayor, we're going to ask kind of add on to what Giovanni was talking about meeting other students from other areas especially if you're coming uh, from long distances or out of state to know that you're going to have an instant network of friends peers that um, are going through the same thing etc um, it's almost like a if you're an athlete you you come in preseason and you already have a team around you and they all want the same thing that you want they all want to graduate they all want to be successful and you know, having that support, I think, is also wonderful. Uh, so, so I do see a question, and it says, hello, is the date set already? So is, do we know when ESP is going to be? So yes, we do. ESP is going to start on the 5th of August and run to the 12th, I believe. I Did I check that? I feel like that's just <laughs> on my arm by now, but th that seems like the right time frame. So it goes from the 1st. Uh, it's at the top of the thing. It's August 5th through 16th. So this is the time frame. August 5th through 16th. So it starts the first Wednesday of August and then goes through the following, the first weekend and then goes through the second weekend and ends on Sunday at noon. Yes. Other questions? 
you know, it is a thing where we get that there might not be questions for today or you might, something might appear to you later or you just kind of occurs to you when you get home or you're, I guess you are home potentially, but you know, you're like, oh man, I could have asked that. My contact is in that uh, info package that you got. I really encourage you to reach out to me with questions. The rest of us are probably searchable on the website. So if you want to ask a question to, to Ms. Simmons or Tamara or JT, you find us or I get, I could forward you a question if you have a specific question for one of them. me and I'll make sure they answer it. Um, um, we we are pretty close knit, even though we're working remotely, but we're very we're able to see each other a lot, and so we're we're able to kind of facilitate this experience for everyone. Um, so if you have any additional questions or want some one on one time with any one of us, please let us know, and we will connect with you and make sure your questions are answered individually. Um, ooh, is there any concern about the pandemic affecting us being able to attend this? Yes, and. Hopefully not. One of the things that we've, we're doing is we're looking at how we can pivot our content and make sure that um, if we have to continue, if we have to do our program in a social distancing sphere, do we do it for half the group at one point and half the group at another point? That could be a solution to deliver some of the content online. Um, could be part of it, or or to say, you know, this is a small enough program that we're able to run it, even if we end up doing our, a semester online in the fall. We, we really don't know what the guidelines are gonna be, but we are creating contingencies and we're creating an, uh, we will create an opportunity for you to do this. So, um, oh, yes. Will students register for classes at the ESP program versus orientation? Um, all students should be getting a, a opportunity to sign up for a pre-orientation virtual session. Students will register for their classes in the time period before the pre-orientation virtual session. And so there will be a couple week time window where there'll be a wave where you'll do it the weeks prior to your pre-orientation virtual session. So you'll get your schedule before the ESP program starts. If you don't complete the program, then that schedule will go away. I mean, if you're unable to complete it or you're, um, you know, that, that, but we want you to have your schedule locked in place and we want you to be able to build a schedule that you can be successful in. We might tweak it during the program if we decide that it might be better for you to take a, diff a different mix of classes, but for the most part, we will make sure that you have the best possible schedule by the end of the program. Um, we have another question, they're, they're really coming. How will house, housing work coming in early for ESP? You will move into your room. Um, what we do is we put everyone into their uh, housing assignment and that way you're able to kind of get your bearings. Some people do a soft move in at the beginning of ESP and then bring the rest of their stuff during move in day. Some people bring it all. Um, it's really it's really up to you what you choose to do. I'm not gonna answer the next question. I'm gonna make somebody else do it. Is there another question? I'll add to what Karen said too, that if you happen to be a commuter, you would move into the dorms temporarily during the program. That's what Angelina did last year. And then so that you can still have the experience of living on campus with everybody else during the program. And then you would just move back off to be your permanent residence afterwards. Kelly Fisher, I just want to point out it is changed. This is a policy that we changed this year to allow ESP students to register earlier. So you might have seen something that is out of date. And if you show it to me, I'll make sure that we burn it in the out of date, <laughs> whatever materials fire that we have every year. But it could be just something that's an old link or an old something on the web that doesn't is no longer in practice. So Currently, our practice is to allow you to register, build a perfect schedule. We're going to consult with you during the program and make sure that is your personal perfect schedule. We're going to help you pass into the next higher math class so you can have an even better schedule, you know, and then we're going to help you accomplish your schedule. And so we'll talk to you. There'll be some time to look at your schedule very carefully and make sure you're in the right classes for you your first semester. Okay. 
Any more questions? Do the panelists have any questions? Anything else you wanna add? Then I will close this out. I am so glad to have seen my colleagues and to be able to collaborate in this way because this was a lot of fun, a little nerve wracking, but fun. I felt like I was on a TV show, so that's always exciting. Um, and I really am, I'm really glad for our viewership and I hope that this has answered or unlocked some more questions for you. Please feel free to reach out to us. Please do your admissions moves to get um, re ready to register and all of that stuff. And if you need any help with any of these processes, your admissions rep or one of us can definitely help you with that. So get at us. All right. Have a great day, everyone.